pots. This is just basic knowledge of how to do throwing. I hope you enjoy it. We will begin. This is Renaissance. So what we're going to start with is just the basic tools. Uh, you have just a synthetic sponge and a synthetic sponge on a stick to get bottles. Uh, if you're throwing a bottle or a large vase and you can't get your hand on it. This is uh, Camus. It is just basically for smoothing, rounding, uh, making things very smooth. You have basic wood tools. Uh, they're good for wet trimming, making lines in it, indentations, carving, applying clay together. You have metal ribs. Metal ribs are good for compressing clay, smoothing clay, taking moisture off clay, uh, making a surface flat. These are some of the tools you'll need. Uh, a needle tool is very good. A wood, a wood rib is good. Uh, these are the very basic tools you will need. Just a synthetic sponge, a needle, and a wood tool, and a wire cutting tool. If you want, uh, if you're having drinkable things or things with lips, the game is... Uh, this is a long wood tool to press out the inside of a bottle or a vase or something where your hand can't stretch into. These are different types of uh, needle tools uh, with different edges, different thicknesses to create uh, different patterns, different shapes, different lines, uh, carving into, scraping away. Uh, really, some of these are not uh, tools at all. They're just things I found. Uh, just different types of wood tools. You have a... Here is uh, the trimming tools. So with these, uh, you got basic trimming tools. You have the flat edge and the rounded edge uh, trimming for different uh, types of trimming. Your most basic uh, tools you'll need is right there. It is just basically a small uh, rounded and then a larger flat head to do large surface areas and small intricate surface areas. If you want to add a very uh, tiny round or square or flat uh, triangle uh, trimmer to it, you can. But mainly just the round flat or the solid flat to get the large surface areas and getting that nice little point on the edge to get, you know, dig into. But really the smaller tool will do just as good and the little round or little uh, square or triangle tool can do the same. Uh, mainly when I use uh, the two on top of each other and the small one are what I use. Uh, but you have different uh, types of trimming tools. They all do something slightly different. You'll have to find what you particularly like. Uh, this one's really cut deep. Uh, you have to be careful and you have to know what you're doing. Okay, so this is a mirror. It shows the opposite, the reverse side of what you're doing. It, it's good when you're throwing just for the fact of you, you get to see what you can't see. Now, what I'm throwing on is a bat. You can not use a bat, um, or you can. Uh, putting water down helps the suction, the clay stick to the necessary. But, you know, a lot of people use it, a lot of people do it. Okay, so I slammed it down right in the middle. Uh, and then I kind of beat the edges a little bit while it's spinning slowly just to, get the, just to get it used and firm onto the bat and round it off just a little bit more. Now, I'm just using as enough water just to get the clay wet to glide around my hands very nicely. Now, what you want to do is you want to brace that right hand against your thigh. Brace it and you got your arm kind of, uh, your wrist cocked just a little bit, pressing against it, using the left hand to go over top of it. So right now, that right hand is locked into the thigh. The left hand wraps over top, and it is the guide, and to make sure that, you know, it's going up and down, rounding off. As you can see, it's rounded. It's, it's not perfectly centered, but it's getting centered. And I'm just using just enough water, just getting my hands wet. Now I'm pushing in both with my left and my right, squeezing and pushing up. So I'm using the uh, meaty part where my thumb is and the lower part where my pinky is of my palm and just 
scooping up with, with my left hand. With my right hand, I'm just using the blunt part of my palm. And basically doing the same thing. I'm pushing down the uh, left hand, thumb meaty part, and just guiding it with that lock of the right hand. Now I'm kind of showing you, you know, a little exaggerated here, but you're just pulling up, pulling up. Now, as you can see, you're getting a little bit of a cone shape, you know, thicker out at the top and going more into a little bit of a point, a rounded point though. Now I'm using that left hand, meaty part of the thumb, tilting it slightly away and pushing down and I'm still just guiding with that right hand, just guiding the right. Um, I always like to clean up a little bit. Uh, so just showing it one more time, going up, pushing just slightly away and sending it back down. You can see how it's folding in on itself. But the entire time I was keeping it rounded. Now that I'm finished with it, I flattened out the top a little bit and now I'm cleaning up. I guess I uh, shut it a little early. So, now we're going to be opening up the pot. What you want to do here is you want, this is going to be the fastest speed you go. You're going to take both thumbs, both finger and forefinger, and brace that. But in this case, both thumbs. And this, I would recommend getting very wet. And you see, I'm just pushing down with my middle finger. I'm still guiding with my right hand. And I'm pushing down. But I'm locking that middle finger, that four uh, finger, and my ring finger all together with my left. I'm guiding with my right hand still, and just pushing, pushing, pushing down. You want to make sure you're getting full revolutions. Um, now I'm just testing the needle tool, and the needle tool will show you right here. See, that's about a quarter of an inch. Um, if you're throwing without doing trimming at the bottom, a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch. Or uh, if you want to do some trimming, a half of an inch for throwing a vase or something. But once again, quarter, an eighth, or a half of an inch. I would recommend if you're throwing a vase or something, I wouldn't go much more than a half. Um, unless it's by design. But really an eighth of an inch for uh, a basic bottom is fine. Uh, just a little bit thicker than the sides or about the same thickness of the side. Now, all I did there is I just pushed it out. So I guided it with my right, right hand and just barely pushed it out. I'm using my middle finger and my, uh, on my left hand and my right index finger knuckle. And I'm just pushing out. And I, as you can see, I'm, I'm showing you, I, you always lock. Always lock your thumb with your other thumb as best you can. It's not always going to work, obviously, when you, you throw up high. But you use that left middle finger, try to lock those other uh, fingers in to make it a tight squeeze. Your, your pinky gets in the way, don't worry about that. So what I'm doing is locking. I got that thumb locked. It's actually even kind of on that clay pot. And I'm taking my right index finger and I'm just pushing even. Both sides are exactly even and I'm just slowly pulling up. I'm making sure that the it's doing full revolutions. Now all I'm doing is rounding off the top edge. It helps the structure build. So I always, after I open it up, I, I push it out to the width that I want, and I do a slight pull to get all the clay about even. Now what I'm going to take the wood rib, I'm actually going to uh, flatten it out. So I have nice, straight 90 degree edges, more or less, to work with. And this will help um, to throw uh, the pot up, so to speak. So if you want, you can have a concave. Um, that's fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to be aware of the trimming and everything else. Now I'm just cleaning up the entire pot a little bit before I throw up. Now this right here shouldn't take that much time you know I'm over exaggerating the amount of time to demonstrate and explain but once again I'm locking the those thumbs together um, I'm pressing with my right index finger and my left middle finger they're exactly even and I'm just pulling up I'm making sure that's doing full revolutions 
all around, all the way around. I'm trying to go up at a nice steady even pace and I'm stopping. I'm rounding off those top edges just to make sure that the structure is nice and strong and you know I'm not getting weird thin and thick parts. Now I'm going you want to add just a little bit of water inside and out. I'm not overdoing the water. I'm not dumping the water in. I'm just adding enough to lubricate the entire pot. Right here, you don't have to take the wood rib and clean it up a little bit. You can if you want to. I don't always. Sometimes I do if I feel like I, I didn't get low enough. Um, so I just put my hands on it very lightly to make sure the whole thing's lubricated before I do my pull. I stick my hand back in here. I can't connect the thumbs, but I'm still doing the exact same thing. I'm taking my right index finger and my left middle finger going up very even. My right uh, finger might be a little bit lower than my left, but I'm still doing the same pull. And as you saw, when I could change and lock it, I'm changing and locking thumbs together. Now, as you can see, I'm getting a slight flare out in the top. You can just collar that in, which basically means you're pressing the sides in. Um, so. You always want to make sure, too, that you're cleaning the very bottom of that pot. You don't want a big puddle in there. So once again, just going to pull up. And now I'm actually pushing from the inside just a little bit harder. And the outside is putting a little pressure, but it's mainly a guide. So that's how it's actually going out. So I'm using my left in, uh, middle finger, and I'm pushing out with more force. Than I'm giving with my right um, index finger. I'm going to clean it up, taking the water out of the inside there, and so now I'm just taking the wood rib. And I'm just moving it up, moving it up, moving it up. Uh, the wood rib is going to compress uh, the clay. And the sponge is actually going to take some of the moisture away. Now I am taking just a wood tool and I'm just trimming off the bottom. The uh, excess on the bottom is going to be cut away. So you can kind of see the shape a little bit better. And you also have uh, less to trim. And it actually evens out the weight to dry evenly. Uh, now, you're going to save all these trimmings here. These trimmings can be used to, uh, made for clay again, uh, you know, slop, mix, anything. Now, I'm just cutting it off the bat. I'm cutting the thing off the bat. This is just a demonstration, so I'm going to cut it in half and show you uh, the thickness of all the pools and the clay. Now, as you can see here, when you pull it off, the entire thing is relatively the same thickness. It's just a little bit thicker at the bottom, but the rest of it is the exact same thickness. And you can see the throwing marks there, how they're all about the same distance and length. Um, but everything is about the same shape from the very bottom to uh, the very top. Just that little bit thickness at the, at the bottom corner that will need to be trimmed away, which I showed with my finger. Now, i um, showing you a little bit faster, just the throwing process once again, so you get to get the, the real idea of throwing. Watch it multiple, multiple, multiple times. So I, all I'm doing right now is I'm taking, you know, that left hand and I'm pulling up and using the meaty fat part of that left hand, I'm using the right hand stiff into my thigh. I'm, I'm holding it, uh, you know, like an anchor. It's anchoring that piece, and it, it's letting the clay go around it, and it's an immovable force. As you can see here, I, I pulled the camera away a little bit, and I'm using that. The left hand is doing the pulling, the lifting, the pushing, and that right hand is that guide. It is the, the solid piece of metal that is guiding it to get centered 
the left hand is actually shaping the you know oval or round shape that you see I'm obsessed with keeping everything as clean as possible uh, I, I don't like dirty throwers but to each is his own as they say now once again I, I'm actually using my right hand a little bit to help pull but mainly that right hand still that anchor and that left hand is uh, just resting on my knee it's not anchored into my thigh like the right but as you can see I pulled up I get a nice little uh, elongated oval shape and you see how I pushed with my left uh, palm and I pushed it back into the side a little bit and pulled it down that actually helps uh, get the clay used to being malleable and movable and uh, you know pulling up and pushing down especially if you're doing a vase it gets the clay used the elastic memory used to pulling the clay up now I'm just flattening off the top and we're gonna go ahead and open I'm using my forefinger and I just get a little bit open now I'm adding a lot of water this is where I suggest you add a lot of water and I'm just pushing down it's the fastest you're gonna have it I still got right hand but I'm pushing down with my left hand and I'm just you know making sure that I'm, the clay is doing in full revolutions now I'm just gonna pull wide a little bit I'm just taking and sweeping my left hand to the side a little bit now I'm going to pull up just a little bit flatten it out enough and I'm just gonna pull up just a little bit here so just to get all the clay about the exact same and there you go um, I'm gonna round off don't forget to round off the top that, that's actually important you're condensing uh, the top of the clay you're compressing it you're, you're making it solid you're making the shape more powerful than it would be otherwise um, I'm just using the wood rib once again to get nice flat 90 degree angles cleans up the bottom a little bit takes out some excess moisture as well now once again I'm just putting that right uh, left hand cupping my my forefinger or middle finger and thumb to the sides and taking my right uh, index or middle finger or whatever finger you want and just rolling it over to round it off to compress and condense that uh, top now once again using my left middle finger locking my thumb into my right meaty part of my right thumb and using my right index uh, upper knuckle to pull and right now it's going to be uh, technically the right uh, knuckle is going to be a little bit lower just due to the fact that you're not all the way at the bottom um, but it's just a slight you know eight it's a half inch difference and then you're pulling up and you're doing a solid pull making you know a fluid movement up giving equal amount of pressure on both sides squeeze and pulling up now round off the top don't forget to round off that top sound like a broken record don't I so once again I'm just adding enough water to lubricate both the inside and the outside but I'm not adding so much because the more water you add it can actually make it weak now what I'm showing you here is to collar in your throwing so basically I'm just showing you can use your your uh, fingers and thumbs or you can use your entire palm to push it in but it's just the same idea as doing a pull you're just collaring it in and compressing once again you're just watching I, I still had that thumb on the outside I'm still connecting it it's not that big of a piece and you know just a solid fluid motion just going up and each time you throw this is actually quite important you want to make sure that you go a full revolution all the way to the top which means you want to start from the very bottom and go all the way to the very top there are circumstances where obviously you're going to stop midway through or do other things but you want to make sure when you're doing your basic or your beginning pools that you go all the way from top to bottom so your clay stays the even thickness throughout which is important um, especially if you're going to collar in <clears throat> you want to make sure you see how I'm using my thumb and my fingers and I'm collaring it in now that I did collar it in 
you need to take from and do a small pull in order to even out the clay once again or else you're going to get very thick on the top and thin on the bottom and obviously that's not a sound structure so it will end up uh, collapsing either inward or outward like it might just fall in on itself or it might depending on how wide or you know thin the bottom or the top is it could you know do the opposite and once again cleaning up now I got my hands wet I lubricated um, I stuck my hand in as you can see it moved it a little bit but that's okay uh, it, it's not going to be that big of a deal because your hands lubricated enough to push that out now if you do want a very thin bottle usually about this point you know you're, you're, you're going to need to find other tools to do that so all I did there is I adjusted I, I switched from doing a pull about even and a little bit of extra pressure with my inside or left hand and my index finger to switching and you know doing a delicate pull but also pressing more with my uh, right hand than my left hand to keep it going inside remember the outside will push in the inside will push out so I did a little collar and now I'm just once again doing a small pull where I collared it in just adding a, enough water to lubricate and to get the clay you know moist all around so now I'm going to do another pull and I'm going to take this time the left hand is pushing out the right is more of a guide and I'm using that since I want to round it off a little bit I adjust and use my middle finger and that's just rounding it guiding it and now it's even just doing a straight even pull now to do that to add that little tiny lip and it can be more exaggerated once again don't forget to compress and roll the edge Usually your left finger and thumb put it on the sides and roll with your right but to get that lip all you're going to do is stop um, just right below half inch inch whatever you want uh, with your outside hand your right hand and just roll your left hand over it so once again you're going to see I'm pushing further out with my left hand or inside hand and just guiding it and just barely putting pressure with the right now I'm rolling it up and now I'm going to now I'm pushing actually with my outside hand in and I'm stopping and I'm rolling that over so there you go this uh, doing something as simple as this it, it just takes practice um, you know th this is not anything difficult it's just basic shapes but it's just learning you know how to move your hand uh, what does what you know what pressure with the inside with the outside if your left hand is higher than your right hand if your right hand is higher than your left hand uh, and what the pressure of each does so once again I just sped this up because this is just showing the end I'm just compressing the clay with that now I'm using the the camus to round off the edge now all I'm doing is holding that and as you can see I, real flat so all I did was hold that and I just rolled uh, the wood tool about an inch below and just or I'm sorry the sponge on the outside with the wood tool rolled over before now this right here once again it's just a demonstration so I'm, I'm going to show you how um, the thick and thinness is regardless of the shape or size it should relatively not always be the same but close to the same um, and as thin you don't need to throw that thin uh, there's give and take to everything you do but as you can see you can see the nice uh, uh, clean throwing lines you can see it's just a little bit thinner where you know I collared it in and it's um, before the lip the you know that bottom edge is just a little bit thicker but the sides are about the same thickness as the bottom now if you wanted to trim a nice bottom 
once again, that bottom is going to be thicker, but you have to weigh that in with uh, the amount of clay you give. Like the, basically, the last two things you just saw were two pounds of clay. This is about two pounds of clay as well. So all we're doing is, is you can see a lot of the fluidity when you speed it up. So we're just watching it sped up slightly so you can just see the fluid motion. Now, uh, I do, while uh, we're watching this, just want to express a, a few opinions or a, a, just a few things to let you know. Water is your best friend and your worst enemy. Too much water can weaken the clay. Not enough water can make you, you know, entirely pull your uh, clay apart. Or, you know, if you're using uh, coarser clay, it can tear your hands up. Um, Using a bat or not a bat, throwing off the hump, which is throwing multiple pieces with one piece of, uh, you know, clump of clay. They all have their drawbacks and benefits. Uh, it's really your preference and you have to decide what you want to do. Um, with, you know, if, if you're a dirty potter or a clean potter, uh, you know, you, you should strive at least to keep your tools somewhat clean. It makes it easier when you need them to use them. Uh, but once again, it's all a personal preference. I've seen some of the best potters be the dirtiest potters. I've seen some of the cleanest potters not know how to throw. So it's really what you want. Um, and it's also stylistic. If you like thicker parts, pots and you want to carve, like throwing thin isn't necessarily a good thing. And, and it could be due to function. You might need a thicker pot. Uh, for certain types of function. Um, you, you might need a, a thinner pot as well. Um, you're actually getting to see my normal thing. I'm using a wood rib. Obviously, this is really sped up. It's not going this fast. Um, but this compresses both sides. I'm using a, a metal rib. I, I, I said wood, wood rib. Talking too much. Um, a metal rib actually, uh, inside and out, compresses and takes a lot of that moisture off creating a, a stronger piece to begin with and also uh, quickens the drying time a little bit. It's not for everybody and there's certain glazes that don't look good with a nice smooth surface. So you know, I, now I'm cleaning that edge up, rounding that off, doing that. As you can see, the amount of pressure just with that sped up, the amount of pressure that that does uh, and moves it just with those little movements. Now, you always want to take that excess out of the bottom. That's very important. Okay, so just a, a different angle. Um, we're, we're nearing the end of kind of what I want to tell you guys. But just remember, uh, centering, opening the clay, doing pulls, and finishing off. Uh, there's many different ways you can do it. I don't want to say that the way I do it is the only way to do it. There is dozens upon dozens of right and wrong ways to throw but if you can make the wrong way work for you the right way do it you know it's like a math problem there's always the right way to solve the problem but there might be 10 other ways that you can solve the problem and get the right answer 99 percent of the time uh, so make mistakes learn from your mistakes learn what to do um, even if it's the wrong way if it works it works don't worry about that you know, the, the biggest mistake you can make in any form, any craft, any art, anything, is thinking there's only one way to do something and there's a right and a wrong way. Sometimes the making a hundred mistakes and figuring out you know, what works from those mistakes is better than learning the right way and never learning um, how to make a mistake because then you don't expand, you, you don't learn, you don't... Uh, improve you just stay the same so some of the potters that start out early and learn all this they learn only the so-called right ways and their pottery their art never improves so learn to make mistakes learn to appreciate your mistakes uh, once again like I said this is all opin opinion based like learn what's right what's wrong um, I really hope that you know, by watching this uh, sped up 
and seeing that each putt I've thrown has had major wrongs and problems and and terribleness to it. And there's been some nice, subtle beauty to it as well. But most of all, just you know, practice, do it, continue to do it, and you'll find out that you know it's easy. All of this is easy. It's just learning the trade. So now this is only a pound of clay. I'm just making a quick mug. It's very simple, quick. This actually takes, when done properly, this takes about eight minutes. Um, it, when I was doing production, uh, I could get this down to five minutes. Uh, it would also help throwing it off like a, a five or ten pound hump, and you could do you know five to ten of them. So very easy. Um, you know, doing like throwing from a, a, a bat, you know, takes up more space and more time, but that's it. Well, you got this one last pot to look at, and then there's uh, the throwing examples done. I hope that uh, I have helped you out. I, I will make a couple quick videos of this, of just showing it one time. This was a long video to kind of go into different things and, and express some uh, personal opinions on throwing and making pottery. But for the most part, it, it was the so you could see different things. But I hope I helped you out. I hope you learned uh, enough to get started. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I, I'm more than happy to help. Um, I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.